Stargirl, ladies and gentlemen, Stargirl episode eight, Infinity Inc. Part Two. So, in, a, in this particular episode, because we only had two storylines here, uh, your boy Pat in the shade. They ended up in the Shadowlands because in the last episode, Ginny and her brother touched each other's hands, and then when that happened, the light and the dark came together and it exploded, you know, and it sucked Pat in the shade into the Shadowlands. So now they're in the Shadowlands, and you know the shade is being the shade, and then you know Pat's just like, we gotta get out of here, shade, and then he's just like, oh, thank you for that keen observation, Pat Dugan, and then he was just like, oh, the Shadowlands, it controls your mind and shows you your deepest darkest fears and since i have no emotions patrick he's like it is you that will bring us down in the shadowlands so he's make, doing this whole big thing he's making fun of pat and they're trying to figure out how they can get out of there so you know the shade's whole thing is he's like all right he's like we'll just go back to the theater he's like because i know how to escape the shadowlands and when they go back to the theater the theater door is closed because he said that jenny's green lantern power he's like the light has contaminated the darkness so now they're trapped in the shadowlands and they can't get out while, while they're trapped in the shadowlands you know they're walking around and then the shades telling him the rules he's like there are rules Pat Dugan of the Shadowlands and then he said that everything that you see will be the Shadowlands pulling at your deep your deepest darkest fears and regrets to try to you know to try to bring you down they go into the diner and then when they go into the diner surprisingly we don't get met with you know because the shade kept saying oh Pat Dugan you're gonna bring us down it actually wasn't Pat the very first image that we saw was a regret that happened from the shade and it ended up being the gambler the gambler was in the diner and you know he was just like Ah, oh, miss he's like well they call him swift he's like ah, oh, mr swift he was like oh you have your regrets indeed because of what you did to your sister and you know everything else you did by not forgiving me when i wanted to make peace and then that's when the shade was just like he was like oh let's get out of here do and then when they leave they go into another room they're at pat's garage and then when they they see somebody you know, fixing a car and when we see who the person is it's actually pat's father and his dad basically tore him a new asshole because he was like, oh, you're useless, you're a bum. He was like, you're the reason why your mother left because you were sad and you were whiny. And he's like, you're a failure as a child and blah, blah, blah. And then that's when the shade was just like, he was like, D he was like don't listen to him, Dugan, because he's like, it's just the Shadowlands playing tricks on your mind. And then Pat was like, nah, he said, actually, all that shit is true. <laughs> he said, every single thing that's coming out of my daddy's mouth, my dad said that shit in real life. And the funny thing is, I guess the reason why the Shadowlands wasn't pulling at like, you know, despair from Pat is because Pat actually said to the shit, he was just like, I never hated my dad. And, you know, he said, despite all the negative, despite all the bad, despite all the horrible things my dad did and said about me, he said, I actually still love him. And then when they left the room, he even said, he was like, I, he's like, despite everything that happens, he was like, you know, like, I still miss you, Pop. And then the, you know, they walked out. They go into another room now. And when they go into the, the other room, then we see the shade sister. And she was lying on the table and she was just like, oh, is that you, Swift? I forgot his first name. She was like, is that you? You know, she was like, come next to me. Cause she was like, I don't want to die alone. Just like our father did. And you know, she was like, say something. And then you know, he started freaking out. And then that's when, you know, like Pat grabbed him. And then when they tried to leave, he couldn't get out because like, I guess Jenny's like Green Lantern power was blocking the door. And then Pat ended up kicking the door in and threw him through the door. And then the two of them got out of there. And then that's when Pat told him, he was like, listen, he said, maybe you should try like facing your fear because that's what Courtney did when she was in the Shadowlands. He was like, you know, she served, he, she got out of the Shadowlands because of you, but she survived the Shadowlands because she was able to fight the darkness. And then that's when the shade was just like, he was like, no, Pat. He was like, I don't fight. He was like, it's not my cup of tea. So then, you know, so then I think they kept going. They ended up going to a fourth room now, which was at Pat's house. And then that's when Pat saw his daddy and then he saw Barbara. And then Barbara was just like, oh, your son hates you. And then his dad was like, oh, Mike will never love you. And then like, he'll grow up hating you. And then they brought up something interesting about his mom because they said that, you know, he misses his mom every single day. And he was like, when she was a kid, they found her like doped up or shot up. Basically, like basically the mom was on drugs. And then he was like, you know, they Pat scooped him up from like an orphanage or something <laughs> or like an or like, you know, like a shelter or something. He scooped him up and then he took his son and then he dipped and then they left his mom behind. So but we did see the mom because when Starman was trying to find Pat and was trying to go to Blue Valley, he found Pat's wife, ex-wife, at a diner. Mike's mom still exists. I mean, she works at a diner. I don't know if she's still on the drugs, but, you know, she has to come into play at some point because it's like they legitimately showed her. They hired an actress to play the mom, and now she keeps being brought up as far as, like, Mike is concerned. So that's definitely going to be a thing going forward. Like, they're going to bring the mom in, and then they're going to try to, like, settle that whole thing. And then they were just like, oh, Barbara will never accept him as the son. And then, he, then that's when he was like, I'm 
going to grow up and hate you just like you hated your father. And then Pablo's like, hold up, I don't hate my dad. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, why does everybody keep thinking I hate my dad? He's like, I never said I hated my father. He was like, yo, this is bullshit. But, you know, but then, you know, and then after that, they, they were fighting and then the whole house lit up green. And then when the whole house lit up green, the shade was just like, oh, he's like, I'm going to die, Dugan. And then he was just like, no, shade. He's like, you got to fight. And then he was like, do you want to die in here? Or do you want to die fighting? And he was like, very well, that's fair enough. And then the two of them tried to get out of the Shadowlands. Now, back in the real world, both Ginny and her brother, Ginny tried to embrace her brother. And when she embraced him for a second time, it caused a shadow wave that knocked everybody unconscious. They, well, Helix, they put Ginny in one room, they left the brother on the table. Um, I would call it Rice. I forgot his first name. They left Rice on the table, and then they put Courtney in her own separate room. And then that's when, like, Boule Granny Goodness was trying to talk to her. And then she was just like, you ruined everything. And then she was just like, why are you here? Why, why are you kidnapping us? And then she said that, and this, 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 this is the disappointing part. She said that the Helix Institution, it's basically a place where they find children who have metahuman abilities, who can't control them, that can't exist in the in the outside world. They bring them in and teach them how to control their powers so they're not a harm to society. And then Courtney was like, basically, you teach them how to hide from, you know, from the rest of the world. And then she was like, oh, we're protecting them and everything. And then like her and Courtney like had words back and forth. And then that's when the skull guy came and he was just like, oh, you, Yolanda, Rick. He was like, Rick can take off the hourglass. Yolanda can remove the costume. Beth can take off the goggles. You can put down the staff, but these children don't have the option. He was like, like, you know, they can't turn off their powers. That's why Ginny and Todd, they belong here, you know, at the Helix Institution. And then we got his backstory because he said that people performed experiments on his mama and he was born with cyanide power. So basically he has the poison touch, a la Fong from um, Street Fighter V. He has a poison touch and if he touches you, he can burn through anything that he touches. And he said he actually burnt through his mom. And I was like, wow, that's disgusting. Like. One can only imagine he literally burnt his way out of the womb, <laughs> you know, like when he was a child. And because he has the cyanide power and because his skin has a poison touch, I guess he burnt, not, not like by touching himself, his skin just naturally burnt itself off. And the reason why he looks like a skull face is because he doesn't have skin because his cyanide power prevents him from growing skin because he keeps burning it off. And I was like, that's very interesting and gross at the same time. And he said, because of that, like he was considered an outcast. And then he said, bootleg granny goodness found him when he was a baby. I don't know how she was able to nurse him back to health and touch him. And then that's when the two of them decided they were gonna start an institution to protect people like them. And I say like them, but you have to ask yourself the question, what does bootleg granny goodness, what's her stake in all this? Because does she even have metahuman powers? Was she like the wife of a metahuman? Was she a mother of metahuman children? Because again, the skull guy's whole thing is, you know, I, I, I can't touch people. So I'm here to, you know, to hide from society and I'm here to help the children. But why is she helping the children? It's like, we need, I need to know what her stakes are because she was just like, oh, we're not the bad guys. We're just trying to help these children, help these children. But why are you here? Like, I need an explanation. Like, why are you here? Like that needs to be explained at some point. And then she was like, oh, it's a mistake bringing you here you know having you in our home and then that's when Courtney told her she said listen the only way that Todd can actually be protected truly protected is if you allow his sister you know to come in contact with him because they were putting like lamps under Todd to kind of like use the light to like shed out the darkness but then Courtney said his sister is the light that he needs. We still don't know how Todd even has shadow powers, but you know, especially if your daddy was the Green Lanterns, that's why I'm like, it was good with a mama. But um, she was just like, Jenny is the light that Todd needs to, to stabilize himself, to balance himself. So they decided to put them back in a room together. And then, you know, after two seconds, the lady, she was just like, hey, we should have never trusted you. And then, you know, it actually took, well, Jenny and Todd came together. And then when they came together, I guess it took them to what we're gonna call the, like what's the opposite of the shadows? The light, the 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 light planes. Then we have the shadow lands, like the light fields. Like, like they were in like a field of light where the two of them they saw each other as children when they were being pulled apart from each other in the orphanage. But then Jenny told Todd, she was like, "I'm not gonna leave you." She was like, "I'm your sister. I'm here for you. We need to be a family. We need to be together." So she expelled the darkness from her ring. It went back into Todd. And then when the two of them embraced each other, it took us to a scene where instead of the kids get instead of instead of the kids being pulled apart by child services. It it actually showed them ripping away from the from the adults. The two kids came back together. They hugged each other, and then it faded to the the grown version of them hugging each other. And now they're back together again. And because Jenny was able to balance out 
and stabilize Todd's darkness, the Shade and Pat, they were able to get out of the Shadowlands as well. And now everybody's back to normal and it's all hunky-dory. Courtney then accused Helix of spying on them via cameras. And then she said that what you're doing here is illegal, keeping these people against their will. And then she was like, we're not keeping anyone against their will. She said, these people can leave whenever they want. And then Todd even vouched for that. He was just like, yeah, he said I wasn't a prisoner. I could have left anytime I wanted. And then that's when Courtney was like, oh. And then she was like, but you're still spying on us, you know, with cameras and everything. And she was like, girl, ain't nobody thinking about you. <laughs> she's like, she said, she said, we do our research. That's how we know about, you know, we know your secrets. But she said like, at the same time, she was like, we would have put cameras around. So now, that, and then that's when the shade was like, he's like, no, now that those questions have been answered, he was like, I'm leaving. So then everybody leaves. They walk out of the institution. You know, bootleg or any goodness, she told Pat, she was like, I trust we'll keep each other's secrets, yes. And then, you know, Pat basically said, yeah, and he walked out. And then the skull guy was talking to, you know, bootleg granny. And then he was just like, listen, he said, Courtney's right. He said that maybe keeping these children locked away isn't the answer to helping them. And then he goes, maybe the way to help them is to form a team of our own. So now they're going to form their own Justice Society team. And I feel like the two of them are going to die and all the kids that they're going to put on this new super team are going to end up in the JSA. And now we're going to get 50 million people in the JSA, which isn't bad because then we can do different storylines and not have like storylines based on the same people throughout the course of the season. I'm interested to see that. And because we did see some other characters, there were three characters that they did show. You know, some girl had a dog. One girl was like sitting at a fancy table or whatever. So there are some people there. So these people are going to get out. It's gonna, there's going to be new heroes in Blue Valley. Maybe they'll show up in the season finale and the Helix Institution of superheroes will come and save the day from whatever the crisis is because we still don't know who, who the big bad is. And then when Pat and them walked out of the room, then he was talking to the shade and he was just like, listen, in order for you to truly reform, if you want to do good, it's not enough to just stop doing bad. You have to actually do good. So he said, why don't you train Todd and help him with his power? Because when you first got your power, wouldn't you have wanted someone to guide you and someone to help you? And he was just like, I see your point, Dugan. But he was like, it's my ultimate curse to be, you know, followed around by mere adolescence and everything. But then at the end of the day, he was just like, fine. So then he asked them, he was like, would you like to come with me so I can teach you how to use your power? And then Todd was like, yeah. <laughs> he was just like, yeah. And he's like, what about you? And then Jenny was just like, she was like, I don't know. She's like, I'm not feeling it. And he said, then by all means, talk me out of it, child. And then that's when she said, she was like, well, I need to go to New York because I got I to gotta talk to Sandy. And then he was, and that's when, that's when Pat was like the Sandman's kid. And then I was like, okay, so that's going to be a thing later. And then she said that Sandy was the one that showed her how to find Todd. So she said that she would go back and help him once she found her brother. And then the shade was like, he was like, oh, but he's like, I said, I'd help two children, not three. He's like, oh Lord. He's like, here we go. So he's like off to New York city. So that's actually going to be interesting. And I would like to see an episode with the Shade, Todd, Jenny, and the Sandman's kid, because the Shade ain't having it. <laughs> like, the Shade completely is not having it. He's not trying to be around these kids. And But to see that would actually be pretty dope. And he even told Jenny, he was like, enough of your shenanigans, child, going forward. So that's, that's going to be cool. And the Shade's back off TV, because you can't have Todd, the Shade, and Jenny on the show anymore, because it's going to cost too much money. So the three of them are going to come back in the season finale with the Sandman's kid and the Helix Institution with all their powers. So now it's back to business as usual pat and courtney they took the bus back to blue valley you know pat was just like you know being in the shadowlands kind of like messed with him a little bit and then courtney said yeah it'll do that but she said i'm here for you if you need my help and then he agreed he was like all right cool he said i'll let you know courtney was like well the one thing is who the hell is spying on us and what are we going to do about it and then that's when they showed the figure who that's been in the sewer spying on them the figure ended up punching the monitor that rick was on and then that's how the episode ended and the figure from, because they actually showed the figure from behind, from like head to waist. And now I'm starting to think it's a woman. <laughs> like I'm actually, I'm legitimately starting to think it's a woman now. So the the worm has turned on this one. I definitely want to see who this person is now, because now it's clear that this person is the big bad. We still don't know who killed the gambler. Lord knows what happened to Cindy. And, you know, but we'll we'll see what happens in the next episode. And thank you for tuning in. So yeah, I mean, they set it up to make you think that the Helix Institution were the bad guys. And then we just get one episode that debunks all that. So I was just like, 
well, damn, you know, <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like, I'm kind of down on that. Like, it, it's kind of a downer that that turned out to be nothing. But if Helix is going to put their own super group together, I'm actually in, into that. I do want to see that, you know, where that goes. So share your questions, comments, and or concerns down below and let me know where we go from here. So check out my other reviews on my YouTube channel because in four days we have the return of Titans. I'm definitely looking forward to reviewing that on my YouTube channel as well. Check out my Comic-Con videos. Check out my New York Fashion Week videos. Hit the notification bell, like and or subscribe for more episodes and reviews of Stargirl. So that was it, guys. So until next week for Infinity Inc. from the Helix Institution signing off. Take care. Get yourself out of the Shadowlands as quickly as possible because we're out this bitch.